Welcome back, and today we're going to make Flappy Bird. So, just as normal, we use P5 to create our game. So, let's get into it. As normal, we need to create a new replit. P5 template, HTML template doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter what uh, thing you use either, as long as it's uh, a good editor. We're going to go onto the P5 Player website. We're going to scroll down. We're going to copy. And we're going to replace our scripts with the correct stuff. We're going to go into here. And we're going to get rid of absolutely everything. And now we're ready to start. So step one, we're going to make some variables for our program. So we just need a bunch of things here. So we're going to have a speed variable. We'll start to two for now. Then we need our uh, flappy bird. We need some obstacles to avoid, some pipes or whatever. We need a score. Okay, so that's those bits done. We're going to head and create the canvas. So we'll say create canvas. We'll make it nice and small for now. 500 by 500. Obviously, we can change it later on if we need to. Um, and then we're just going to put a few things in here. So we're going to do world.auto step equals false. Now, because we've done that, and if you want the game to run properly like it normally would, we need to do world.step here. If you don't do that, the game won't run or do anything, so we need to put that in there. We're going to add it in some gravity, so world.gravity.y equals 5. And then that's our sort of main game setup now. So we need to make our Flappy Bird. So we'll do uh, Flappy Bird is a new sprite. We're going to do that at 50 across and then half the screen's height. We're then going to have it. 20 in diameter, so it'll be a little circle for now. And then we'll make it dynamic so it can hit things. It follows the air physics simulation. And then we'll make a new group for obstacles. So obstacles equals a new group. We'll add in the collider. We'll make that K so it doesn't fall with the gravity. Um, we need height in there, so obstacles dot height equals 300, obstacles dot width equals uh, 50 pixels, and then we'll just make, give it a color, so obstacles dot color equals green. Okay, so those are our two main bits. That's most of our setup completed. So now we can move on to the next part, actually drawing things and getting it moving. So the next thing we need to do is just do some bits in the draw just to get it all looking right and working. So we're going to clear the background. I'll clear the whole canvas, sorry. We're going to put in the background of black. Now I'm going to write controls here because I'm going to make a function called controls, which we'll do in a minute. So function controls like that. And then we just need to do a few different extra bits in. So we're going to add a camera in. So we'll do camera.x equals the flappy bird dot x plus 100, just so you can't see the um, pipe spawning. We've got a well dot step in there, and we're going to say the flappy bird dot vel dot x equals our speed. Okay, so what should happen then is we should have a little circle that just falls and nothing else happens because we've got no controls in there. So take a good, a good look at the screen, make sure you've got that copied down. There's not a lot of code there. So then we can carry on with the next part, which is our keyboard controls. So we're already calling the function, so we don't have to do that anymore. So we can do if kb dot presses space then we're just going to do flappy bear dot vel dot y minus equals five so if i run that now what it should mean if i press space you see i'm just doing a little hop and it'll come back down um so a few changes we need to make to that but that's working really well so next thing we need to do is go ahead and get our um flappy bear to reset if it goes off the screen so we can say if flappy bird dot y is greater than the height take away we'll say 50 just so it's around here on the screen then we'll just do flappy bird dot y equals height divided by two flappy bird dot x equals do we say 50 i think it was so we'll put him right back to the start, and then we'll just slow him down, just like that. 
so it doesn't it doesn't take across any of the when it resets any of the um crazy physics that's got if you fall off the screen for ages it'll rack up quite a high velocity from the mass which means then it'll come on straight on your screen and fall straight off we can then do the same thing again but we can do this bit of code here and then we'll say if it's less than 50. So what that should mean is now it'll probably look a bit stupid but it'll keep respawning and if I go too high so and that'll just keep doing that forever now it's probably going to go a bit crazy and start lagging out but because we've changed this here if I just comment this out what you'll see happens is it'll fall and it'll get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and it'll look really stupid so we've put in that little test there that little check and just reset everything so it's right back to the beginning and there's nothing weird so next thing is spawning so we need a function for that so a function if you can spell it right now we're going to generate a integer for us we're going to call it gap size and that's going to be a random number between 80 and 120 that's just a number i've made up just so there's always going to be some sort of space in between the um in between those obstacles but then going to make a variable called top which is going to be our new obstacle dot sprite and then we just need to set its y value so top dot y equals random so we're going to set it randomly between around here and off the screen now sprites are drawn in the middle so the reason why i'm going off the screen is that it won't draw the whole 300 and take up 90 percent of the space so i'll do height divided by six and then we can do top dot x equals a we don't actually want it to be a random we want it to be flappy bird it's x position plus 500 or the width okay because then it'll spawn off the screen and we won't see it coming okay so we can check that works by just calling spawn which is going to be messy here so if i run that now if i've not got an error which i do because i missed an equal sign there Ooh, so what do I call it? obstacles yep obstacles dot sprite my own fault for not reading my own code so now what should happen is you see all these top ones it's looking daft but they're all spawning randomly off the screen like that. so that's really good so that's wet so now we can do exactly the same thing but we're going to do that for the bottom so we'll say let bottom equals a new obstacles dot sprite exactly the same again we're going to say bottom dot y equals the height of the top plus the gap size plus this might be a little too big actually but we'll see if it works um, and then bottom dot x equals flappy bed dot x plus the width so now if we run that again and try and get a bit further Oop, let's just make sure we capitalize the S for using camel case. So you see now, obviously there's way too many for you to play the game, but it's spawning the bottom ones and the top ones, so that's working really well. So the only thing we need to do now is get rid of this from there and go back into our setup. And we're going to use a function called set interval. So set interval. I'm going to call the spawn function every second. Okay, what that means is and um, this function is going to call every second really easy so now we should have pretty much 90% of the game done so I've got a pipe there so now all we need to do is have it so it actually stops you when you die okay so now we're going to make a little throwaway function here we're going to do flappy bed dot overlaps with obstacles we're going to call a function called lose you can put that anywhere but i'll put it here function lose and all we'll say is if that happens the um i'm going to pass in the bed and the obstacle we'll do o dot color equals red and then whatever you want to happen you know i'm just going to say no loops so it stops the game but let's see if that works so i should be able to play the game relatively fine and if i accidentally miss turns it red I've lost the game. I have to refresh it to play. So that's most of the game done now. 
I don't think there's much more that we need to do. So one thing we could do is just do obstacles dot remove. What that would do is then instead of having loads and loads and loads of obstacles spawn on top of each other, if I die there and then keep coming in, it should get rid of them all. You're not going to see it go red anymore, but it's resetting the game. So I suppose the next thing you could do is maybe worry about um, setting the score back to zero. We could then set the score to zero there. And then maybe something is daft as every second, I don't know, or every millisecond, I don't know. Let's call it a better name than score because it's going to freak out. And then I could just do function set score and then just do score plus equals one. So that should then give us a score. And then I think lastly, we could just do uh, fill in white text size, I don't know, 30 text. 50-50. So yeah, so we've got the score there. 50-50 is seems like a good place. Um, obviously, we've got an issue here where our score is still increasing. So we need to make sure this works properly. And then another thing I've noticed as well is that it still makes these. So if I just put in the obstacles sort of move there and there, it shouldn't then ruin our game. And then the only thing I think that's not um, working is the score's not resetting. Because otherwise you just do this and win infinitely. So that's what we need to think about fixing next. So just like with the obstacles, we just need to make sure our score goes back to zero. If I go off the screen as well. So now, so now I can actually play the game. I'll get rid of that. And then it'll get slowly faster. And then we've got a nice little uh, fluffy bed game going. That's done. The only thing you might want to do extra, well, it's a bit too hard, that one, um, is change the obstacles with an image, change the bed to have an image. But that's all really easy stuff. There's some plenty of uh, tutorials on my channel if you want to look at changing images and things. But I think I'm going to stop the video there, and I'll see you in the next one.